All right, guys, we're back with another uh, pinup system video, and uh, this one is all about games, playlists, and media. A big topic. I'm not going to go super heavy detailed onto each one. This is more of a get you up and going, explain the basic stuff, and uh, you know we can get into more advanced stuff in other videos. But uh, we're just going to go through all of that to get your games into Pinup Popper and uh, create playlists and then to add some media at a basic level. So uh, basically, you're going to want to, well, get back into your Pinup Popper config. I've already added in uh, my emulators. So they're good to go. And I have them all active. This is very important that you guys make sure that I, now I don't have a FX2 set up, but I've got FX3 and Future Pinball and PC Games all active. So it's important that you remember to have your emulators active. So to add games, we go to the games manager. The first step is you got to go to the first one here, but I'm just going to show you real quick. By default, we have playlists, empty playlists already set up. So you're going to have future pinball, visual pinball effects, and uh, all this stuff set up here. That's there by default. That's why you see it if you try to run uh, pinup popper without anything set up yet. So I just don't want people to get confused. That's only a default setup for you guys. You don't have to use those. You can remove them if you want. Uh, but we'll come back to that after. So the first step is you'll go to your games manager. So we're going to add games here. Now this is so much power just in this one window alone. Like look at all this stuff, man. Amazing. So this here in this tab, it's going to show every single game you have added to the pinup popper database. Not your playlist, just the entire database. All right? So if you want to add new games, you go to the Add New Games tab. So here, we've got a lot of stuff in here. You can uh, add all your emulators in one shot. Any new games that you haven't added yet will be in here. Or you could do it on a per emulator basis. It's up to you. Uh, and we've also uh, put, you know, uh, Convenient, uh, you know, open game folders, open ROM folder, open pub pack folder, just to make it, you know, uh, nicer for you to kind of see where your stuff is from here, or if you have to do some copying and pasting or whatever else. Uh, up here, this is for your, for all you mutants out there that decide that you absolutely have to have your your uh, table files in their own subfolders instead of having them all in the main tables folder like most of society. So that's for you guys. <coughs> <I'm freaks. laughs> you know, uh, that's for you guys. So enable that if you're one of those guys. Uh, and down here, this is uh, really important. Uh, basically what this means is that when you have this enabled, what this is going to do is when it adds your game to the database, by default, with this checked off, it will only do a search for media for the name of your table file right up until the first bracket. So I'll kind of explain a little more about that afterwards, but that's what this is about. If you have this checked off, then it's going to do matching exactly table file, media file. If you have this checked on, It'll do a match of the name in the table file all the way up to the first bracket for any media that matches that. So this is kind of a more traditional way of doing things for a lot of you guys on other front ends. Uh, so if you want to have it done more like that, then check this off. You can still change stuff after the fact on a per game basis if you want for fine tuning as well, guys. So don't worry about that. Uh, by default, this is enabled. And uh, so now that we understand all this, we're going to scan for all the new games in all our emulators. Look at that. A thousand games already scanned and added in just like that. Now that's including my uh, Future Pinball. That's including my uh, PC games, my Pinball FX3. It's everything in here. And you can like, you know... Uh, have it sorted any way you want. So what you're doing is this is listing everything that you can add. You don't have to add them all, but this is everything that is new in your location of your uh, table uh, folders that have not been added to the database. So you can either select them one at a time, like with control and then click, or you can sort them, uh, you know, any way you want. So the game display, uh, that's what you're gonna see showing up on the uh, the front end. 
the game file name is the actual table file and your emulator. So what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to select all, which is a lot. <laughs> you can see, so I'm just going to add everything. So once they're highlighted, you just choose add to system. And just give it a moment. There you go. Now, understand, I have a sl I have a slow hard drive that all my games are on, so that uh, you know it's usually very instant, especially if you're on a, a solid state drive with all your games on there. Uh, so, because I'm doing this on my desktop, not on my cab, guys. So there you go. Everything that's green is now added to our database. All of those, just like that. You don't have to add them one at a time. There, we don't deal with XML files. We're dealing with SQL database. So very quick, very snappy. You don't have to do it uh, the long, laborious way anymore. And look at that. Everything has been added now. You can go through every single game in one shot here. As you can see, every system by alphabetical order. Or, or you can uh, do it by date added. Like, you've got so many options. You could do it by uh, just by emulator. Anything you want. And then you can search under key names. So let's say... Let's say we have, uh, you only want Williams games. There you go. You can see just the Williams games. Like, so, so many options here, guys. So, a brief overview of what all this stuff is on the side here for each game. Basically, your screen name, that's what's going to be shown when you actually, like, on the text line in uh, Pinup Popper while you're browsing. Uh, this is your game emulator, obviously. Uh, this is the, the game file name as it sees it without an extension. Uh, now, the media search, this is important. Remember when I mentioned about how it's going to truncate the media for each individual file? Uh, by default, if you had that one checkbox selected, it's basically going to ignore everything after the first bracket. And so it's going to use only anything that matches this. And that's why it's showing the star. So that star basically means that it's only going to do this base name up to the first bracket for any file. So it can have multiple files and, you know, again, you could have multiple tables with the same base file name. So that means you don't necessarily have to have different media for every single, uh, every single version of Tron that you have on there. But then if you want to have specific ones, then you go on here and then you can choose what you want specifically for that one, if you want, instead of having it do an automatic match. So that's what this is for here. So blank, as you can see, uh, if you have nothing here, that means it's going to use the default, which basically means it's going to match it exactly to the file name for uh, matching media. So all sorts of other stuff in here that, you know, in the future may be able to get automatically added in. Uh, the important ones I want to point out, though, uh, these are more for, uh, you know, matching up. Uh, for automatic uh, playlists, creation, and all that kind of stuff. But this is the important one here. Uh, if you hover over it, you can see this is for what displays you want to keep on for your media when you launch a game. So if you launch a game and you want a topper video to keep running, then you can uh, specify that on a per game basis. Uh, by default, uh, and I actually missed that, and actually I'll go back and show you, in your emulators, by default, you can you can set that up here. You know, uh, so if you want to have to a default, to all every game has the topper screen displaying the video or media when you launch a game for every single game in uh, Visual Pinball X, for example, you would specify that here. Or you can have multiple ones. All right, that's the default. But if you want to have it on a per game basis, because you want some games to show one. Uh, but there may be a few that has a pup pack, so you don't want that to show, then you would specify that here. All right? So that's what, the, that's what uh, that field here uh, is all about. It could be your topper, backlast, whatever you want to do on a per game basis, guys. Now, if you choose minus one, that means it will not display any media at all whatsoever because whatever you enter here overrides the default. It does, so you could add one, two, three screens, or you can have none at all. It, it's basically going to override the default. So that's what you do in, in here for those uh, on a per game basis. Uh, you could uh, geez, you could do your volume. You can do all sorts of stuff. Uh, now these three here, these custom launch parameters, that's going to be used more for the advanced stuff when you launch a game in script. 
and you want to do all sorts of really neat advanced stuff. So that's what these three are for. Uh, alternate launcher, that's going to be probably more for if you guys want to use like a alternate EXEs for the same emulator somehow. And again, that's more in your launch script uh, where you'll configure all that kind of stuff. So again, this is for more you, you advanced guys. We'll probably get more into another video with, about uh, scripts and all that to help you guys out. DOF command, that's if you want to, you know, basically create your own DOF uh, effects or whatever else and add it to your custom config on uh, the pinup menu ROM and DOF config tool. That's more advanced stuff, you know, so honestly, unless you know what you're doing with DOF and all that kind of stuff, uh, that, that may be another video. That's more of a work in progress, guys, so, but that's basically what that one's all about uh, for the pinup menu ROM, adding stuff to that. So uh, that's the main stuff in this uh, here. Uh, so I'm trying to think here. Uh, all right, so now lookups, uh, this is more for, you know, uh, the more advanced stuff. We'll eventually have like databases and other stuff that maybe the community will make that we can import and then it will automatically make use of these fields and categories. So that way, when you go back to your games here, it'll automatically be filled in. So that, that's more of a, a future uh, thing that the community can help provide. So that way when you import games or add games, they'll automatically have stuff filled in for you. Uh, and that's what this import data is also about. That's for if you've got some kind of you know, uh, database sheet of some sort that can be imported, that can be done here. Uh, not going into that in this video, that's more a more advanced thing, you know, uh, but that's what all that's about. So now we've got our games added in. So. Once you have your games added in, you're good to go. Now, I'll just point out that if you go back to Games Manager, right, and uh, you want to search for new games, all of them or just per system, it's going to do a scan. It won't find any new games because we've already added everything there. If I add new games, then something may show up. It depends on, you know, how you manage your system. And uh, so there we go. That's good. So now you can go to your playlist config. And don't, don't mind my annoying dog in the background. Uh, my wife's gone and he gets uh, super uh, super sappy when she's gone and he starts barking. So please ignore him if you can hear him. Uh, so, uh, so anyways, here's our playlist config here. Uh, this is where we basically will have anything you want for playlists, either the defaults or you want to create your own. Super powerful. Uh, so basically, you can see here, Future Pinball, Visual Pinball, FX3 already added. You want to do it manually and simply. All you do is you go over here to your filter emulator. You go to Future Pinball and here's everything that you have to choose that has not been added to this current playlist. So you can either do one game at a time or you can right click and choose select all. And then add game, boom. Future Pinball stuff is already set up ready to go. That's it. No one game at a time, no XML or INI files, that's it. Now, same with uh, all the other systems. Visual Pinball, you know, you go through here, add them all. Oops, sorry, sorry, I gotta select them first. Add them all. FX3, select them all, add them all. And, and I'll, I'll just keep it, yeah, I'll just keep those three for now. Nice and simple. So that's the basic setup for a, a simple playlist, like for a main system. But if you want to add your own playlist, it's very simple. You just go to the playlist home for the main home screen and you choose add playlist and you, you know, you know, you add whatever you want for a playlist, you know? So therefore, if you want to have a mix and match of anything you want, and you want to do it, you know, manually. You don't want to, like, you know, have to, you know, uh, have something fancy that automatically adds stuff. You can do that if you want. So if you want to mix and match from, you know, Visual Pinball, you know, and other systems, you can do anything you want. You can, again, here you can sort these things by name, by date added, so that way when you have newer tables added, it's easier to find stuff. But you can also search and filter through games here as well. So if you have a ton of games, again, if you want to, uh, actually, I don't know if I'll have that. Oh, yeah, here. Okay. I'll try that. So if you want to do a search, 
So this is everything that had the word ultimate in it as an example, you know, uh, or let's try here. We'll do this. Everything that had Tron as an example, you know, super powerful, super simple, additional custom filters if you want to use it for sorting. Now, again, you could also have sub playlists within your playlist. So you click on your main playlist, you add, and then you do uh, another one, you know, uh, so there you go. Now I have another sub playlist. I can add a whole bunch of stuff in. So if I want to add just a few, boom, you know, whatever you want, anything and everything from any system, no problem. And that's the, that's the simple basic playlist setup. Now you can get way more advanced because if you look for e uh, in the set, uh, tabs here for each playlist, You've got advanced settings here for active SQL commands. So basically, if you want to have what's basically an active playlist, what that basically means is that if you add files, say copy, a, a, in the case of Visual Pinball, let's say you get the newest uh, Visual Pinball table uh, release and you copy it to your folder, well then Popper will actively automatically, if you set it up in here, through an active playlist query, uh, will add them in automatically. You don't have to come back here and do it yourself. It would just automatically add anything it sees into, in that folder into this uh, playlist automatically. So you'd have to you know, get to know SQL. I don't know much about it, and that's gonna be a more advanced video. The other thing here is you could set up a passcode for any playlist. So if you want to lock out your, your snowflake generation kitties, you know, that can't handle things, uh, then you can go ahead and do that. So that way, you know, they can't get access to uh, more adult themed material. So that's what that's for there. And then, uh, yeah, that's the main stuff for the playlists. Uh, you know, that, that's, it could be way, way more intricate if you want. And uh, if you want to have themed playlists, you could do that all sorts of stuff and that's what all this is for. So let's say you have uh, the data fields automatically populated for your tables for different types of themes or categories, like say solid state, EM, or whatever type of tables, you can have playlists made automatically based on that. You don't have to manually do that yourself. If you wanna do it where you wanna have, say, uh, I don't know, uh, sports themed tables, that will automatically be added to a sports theme playlist. You can do that. So much power here, but that is way more advanced than what I'm gonna do in this video. And I don't know SQL anyway, so the smarter guys will have to help out with that. Uh, so, okay, we got our games added. We got our playlists added. So now comes super awesomeness of the media manager. So look at this thing. Look at it. Behold its glory. This thing is amazing. So this is where you can, if you want to add media, now if you already got media added, that's nice, that's great, you know, but this, you can manage everything here if you want. It is so amazing. And I mean, we could do a whole giant video just on this program, on this portion of the program alone. So basically what you can do is you can either show all your stuff or you can do it by single emulator, you know, whatever you want. So what you do is you go in here. Now, if it's yellow, that means you don't have this specific media for that particular table or playlists. It could be, so you can do games or you could do playlists. So you could see here for my playlists, I have some, some media, but not all of it, right? So whatever playlists you want to make it, if you want to have custom stuff for that, you can absolutely do that as well. And you saw that on my previous video, uh, that when I was uh, showing uh, the first demo of pin and popper. So, uh, as an example here, okay. So, I'll go to this one here. Now understand this looks a little messed up because I'm on my 4K setup and uh, my DPI is not at 100%, but that's because I'm recording the video. Normally this will all look normal. So ignore this messed up text here, guys. So as a simple example, I'll go to media I already had from uh, another setup, but I'm just gonna do this for the sake of showing you guys. So, all right, so if I wanna, for example, add backlash files, I can just go boom. Look at that, drag and drop, that's it. And guess what else it automatically does? It automatically would take whatever the file was, it will rename it to match what you, your table name or what your search string name for media will, will need to be for that table. It will automatically rename it for you. 
So you don't have to do all the work, hard work of renaming stuff or whatever. It's awesome. It's so simple. And that goes for everything. That goes for like your audio. You know, if you have uh, some audio files, if you have audio launch files, everything can be done here. Super, super simple. Now, another thing is, if you already had media, then, uh, but it might not be the proper name or anything else, you know, then what you can do is also, now I'll just uh, copy over what I have here for, uh, for well, yeah, we'll do VPX, sure, why not? I only, I only have so much room left on my hard drive here, but, uh, so if you wanted to copy over some media that you already had set up, so what you'll do is you'll copy it over to your uh, appropriate folder and I'm just going to copy over a bunch not all just a, a bunch and you can then manage all that from in here now you've got oh, so many options in here like you've got your uh, additional screens for like flyers uh, help videos audio launch topper DMD everything is in here uh, your wheel images it's all going to be matched up when you drag and drop it. Or, as an example, uh, no, I did, uh, which one did I did? I did, uh, can't remember which one I did. That was Visual Pinball. Okay. So, while that's going, I'll just go in here. Now, you can see some of it's already matched up as it's copying over, right? So, uh, here, actually, I'll just exit that out of that. So, the idea here is that, uh, let's say, uh, for example, you want to find whatever you're missing. So if you want to do all your play field videos, you can right click on a play field for whatever table and you can choose find the next one that's missing. And then it'll go through and boom, it stops at the next table that does not have that media. So we're at Metal Slug and then you can drag and drop that one uh, and then go find next missing. And, and just keep going and fill in the media as you need it. What it can also do is let's say you click on uh, something it's going to automatically show you what files are in there that closely match the table. So in this case, the Metallica one, uh, you know, it had a couple that matched up. Now, if you wanted to change it, you could click on here and then click right name, rename file. What that means is it's going to take whatever file that was in there and it will automatically rename it and make it match your table file. So that's... It's, you got so many options here, guys, to make everything so much easier. Uh, now, the other thing is, if you do drag and drop, it should automatically overwrite the uh, previous file. Now, that being said, if you have a bunch of files in different formats, let's say you have an MP4 or an MKV and a bunch of other files of the same name and extension, well, it's not going to overwrite each and every one of those. It's only going to overwrite uh, a similar type, as far as I know. Now, the other thing is, that's why I highly encourage you guys, when it comes to your media, use only one file type for all your media and try to have it nice and clean. So that way, you know, uh, when you go to manage this stuff, uh, you're not going to have multiple files uh, that, it, it, you know, uh, yeah, just keep it nice and clean for now. And there's uh, more advanced stuff behind the scene that, that this thing does for matching files, you know, but this is the main stuff. Like, man, like, look at all your options here. Uh, so you can basically keep doing that until you're done and then you're good to go for all your media, man. Like, and you can add them on the fly so easy. Now there's other advanced stuff here as well. Like for example, let's say you have a complete, uh, a complete pack for something. Now I don't have a complete pack for everything yet, uh, cause I haven't copied all my media, but let's say, uh, you wanted to back up all your media for 24 to share with someone else. So if I right click on this, I have an option for create media pack. So it asks me, do I want to do that? And it says yes. So now what I do is I go to my uh, pinup system install and you'll look in here, your media pack. Boom, look at that. It already took whatever I had and put it into one common zip file. And then it, what it does is it renames everything so that pinup popper will recognize it as to what this needs to be matched with so your back last dmd everything else so now let's say i want to re-import that okay now i'm just gonna let's just say i have this for a different table here let's just go down now 
it's a terrible example, but let, let, let's say that uh, it was for another table. So uh, I'm trying to find one that doesn't have anything here. <laughs> wow, that was pretty, it was too quick. All right, so let's pretend uh, this was uh, an X-Men zip that we downloaded. If I drag and drop that onto here, do you want to install that? To so what that ba basically does is it's now going to extract this, file, this uh, zip file, take all the media, and it's going to automatically take what it's in there for topper, playfield, whatever else, and it's going to automatically match it to the name of this game. So even if it's from another game system, but you want to use the media because it's close enough and matches, whatever, you hit that, and then boom, look at that. Now, it automatically took all those files that I had in a zip and made them work with this specific one. Now, ideally, you shouldn't be, you know, doing it to the wrong table file, but I just wanted to show that. So, if, I, if you have a newer one that you want to update it, same thing. So, it's an easy way to create a pack for a single table so that you can then share it with a buddy or anything else, and then they can get the complete... Popper uh, media updated just like that, no problem. And it can be nice and, you know, automatically renamed for your particular setup. So, you know what I mean? Like, every option to rename everything automatically is in here, guys. So, so much, so much with this program. It's amazing. So, yeah, that's the main stuff there. Uh, you know, for media, uh, that uh, that's the big stuff there. Now... I don't have a nice clean setup here, but you know, that's the main stuff to get you up and going. Once you get to this point, you've got your games added, your playlists added, your media added, then you're you're pretty ready to get up and going at a basic level. And then we'll get into more advanced features after that. But if I launch it right now as an example, so again, you already saw that I had stuff there, but look, I've got stuff showing up already. Now, again, I didn't copy all my media over. I only had some stuff copied over. But again, you can see, you know, my stuff has been, you know, added in for what media I did have. I didn't copy over my wheel files yet. So you can see we're up and ready to go to do all the basics as is. And, you know, like even for future pinball, like I, I had some stuff added in. You can see that that's the media I dragged over for that one. So, yeah. That at a basic level, we're, we're ready to go. All you have to do is complete your media, and then you should be good to go for uh, launching, a, launching a game. Uh, uh, again, uh, if I had a, a wheel file, you, you'd see that, but uh, you know, so now if I wanna play the game. Please wait, I am now loading up the game. Have fun. And there you go, it, the loading screen comes up. Game is up, it will be up and running in a moment. Now, again, this is my desktop, so keep that in mind. Things are going to be out of whack. But, you know, if this is your cab and you were properly set up, then everything would be good to go. So now what happens is Pinup Popper, once the game is loaded up, it gets out of the way completely. And then now you only have your game. Now, if I wanted to have on a desktop topper screens and stuff like that still showing, I absolutely could do that. So once I'm done playing, then I would hit my exit emulator key. And boom. So after I hit the key, it only took one second because I don't have DOF enabled. But look at that. Like, look how quickly that, that, that worked there. So that's basically it, guys. Uh, you know, so you're basically set up at, for Pinup Popper. So now you just add more tables, create more playlists, add more media, and get yourself nice and complete. And then you'll have a really fancy, snappy, fast front end that can be customized in so many ways and we'll have additional videos for more of the behind the scenes features because there's way more than what i've shown you here and uh so just look for the other videos that are coming up uh again so much we've got the scripting to cover we've got recording your media to cover uh you know uh even desktop setups, I guess, uh, you know, getting more into the emulators for other emulators like MAME or PC games, uh, you know, and getting more into, uh, you know, where everything is, the the more advanced structure of where the folders are and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, so look for uh, more additional videos, but this should be enough to at least get you guys up and running at a basic level. So, uh, I guess, uh, see you in the next video and, uh, keep an eye out for, uh, additional, uh, pinup popper videos, guys. So, uh,
See you there.